This guy, Flash Thompson, he probably deserved what happened. But just because you can beat him up, doesn't give you the right to. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. It's no doubt that you realized just a few days ago that it was Spider-Man Day, basically celebrating the release of Amazing Fantasy 15, the introduction of Peter Parker Spider-Man. Certainly it's a character that's captured the imaginations of people worldwide, certainly deserving of a holiday of his own. And there was a, there was a trailer that came out, didn't give us some more information, but certainly is leading us to... We can speculate about some of the things that Marvel's going to be doing, celebrating the 60th anniversary of, of Spider-Man next year. Some interesting stuff that they kind of put in there. And I do have some thoughts on um, that I want to put together kind of all in one package on where they're moving with this. Some of the mistakes they probably, probably made along the line and with this new Spider-Man Beyond, the Beyond era of Spider-Man moving forward. So we should get right into it. As I said before, Marvel are teasing a year-long celebration of Spider-Man beginning in 2022 for the 60th anniversary of the beloved flagship char character of Marvel Comics. And this was kind of kicked off by a teaser trailer on Marvel.com. If you go watch it, it's it's like 30 seconds. There's not a whole lot to it. There's some art with some, some uh, you know catchphrases. One of them is like, beyond sensational, beyond spectacular, beyond ultimate beyond amazing you know coming in 2022 obviously those are all the adjectives that have been used to describe spider-man in the comic book universe will we be getting beyond spider-man <laughs> next year i don't think so but i do have a feeling we're going to be getting a, a spider-man number one once they hit issue 100 because once they hit that milestone you know they can charge like 12 dollars for it and then when they do number one the next month they can charge like $15 for it because it's 60th anniversary. This is occurring as Nick Spencer is leaving Amazing Spider-Man at issue number 74. We've seen the cover. You know, It's, it's uh, Peter Parker, Mary Jane. There's a bouquet of flowers. It appears that they may be getting married uh, before Nick Spencer exits the building. He's certainly been hinting at since the beginning of his Amazing Spider-Man run which has been quite successful, and I, I must give him credit. He has definitely um, rehabbed the image after Secret Empire that, uh, you know, one more day will be addressed, perhaps fixed. I think the mar the rug is going to be pulled out from us, uh, but we shall see. I can't predict the future. I can only, I can only be cynical about it, I guess. So here's one of the issues. They have fast-tracked. Nick Spencer's Spider-Man as of late. There have been multiple months where we got Spider-Man essentially weekly. We've gotten multiple giant-sized Spider-Man issues, King Grants, and I think there maybe there was there a Chameleon Conspiracy giant size. Obviously, those are double-sized issues. They definitely could have gotten Nick Spencer's run out to the end of 2021, releasing it bi-weekly. They didn't even they wouldn't even have to go to a monthly release schedule just to get Nick Spencer's uh, payoff and the end of his run, which he is leaving early on. He was supposed to go to issue 100. They could have got it out to, to 2021 and started this new Beyond era, which is also going to be fast-tracked. They're going to be releasing it three issues a month. I think this is a mistake. They're bringing in a, a large group of writers, including Kelly Thompson, Zeb Wells, Saladin Ahmed, Cody Ziegler, and Patrick Gleason, who I think is going to be writing il and illustrating on this amazing Spider-Man run. There's some exciting names in there. You know, if it was Zeb Wells and Patrick Gleason, I'd be really excited. Some of the other names have me a little bit more concerned. But they did something very similar to this when they relaunched Uncanny X-Men like two and a half years ago. Yeah, it was about two and a half years ago. And they brought in a team of like five people to relaunch Uncanny X-Men because behind the scenes, we didn't know this. They hadn't announced it, but... Jonathan Hickman was already, he was supposed to come in and take over X-Men. But something happened and he got delayed like nine months. And they needed to do something with X-Men. And the new group editor at the time, Jordan White, who I'm not particularly fond of. If you're a fan of the channel, you, you probably know that. His big idea was, well, let's get this team of writers together and we'll fast track release Uncanny X-Men weekly 
for 10 weeks. So in, a, in two and a half months, you got Uncanny X-Men re- relaunched. You got to issue tw- 10, which, of course, is like 10 bucks because it was a milestone. Ugh. I'll get to my issues on milestones here in a minute. <laughs> and when you get to issue 10, and they launched this uh, Age of X-Men event. I do not like Hellfire Gala. I thought Iron Man 2020 was awful. Age of X made of it puts those to shame with how bad it is. It is one of the most poorly constructed, poorly executed, biggest waste of time in the history of the world. Even if it was good, it would have been a waste of time because Jonathan Hickman was just re- rebooting X Men anyway as soon as it was over. But just the the audacity of just how terrible it was. And it's not like Jordan White wouldn't have known it was terrible. Yet he, he greenlit it anyway, and that was his big idea. And they're doing something similar to this. They're releasing Spider-Man three times monthly with this new team of five writers so they can get to this Spider-Man Beyond event in 2022 to celebrate the, the 60th anniversary. Which they, I guess, getting to issue 100 of Nick Nick's, uh, I'm sorry, Nick Spencer's run which would likely have been the um, the wiping out of one more day and the reconstitution of the marriage. Well, I guess that would have been the celebration. It would make more sense. But they could have gotten to this part in the early part of 2022 and then maybe given these writers a little bit more time to really construct something together, give the artists some time to really get some stuff out there and put out something really, really high quality. The fact that it's going three times you know, a month and it's five different writers, you know it's going to suck. That's um, that's too bad. It's Spider Man, so it's still going to sell. There's a you know there's a floor on Spider Man, and for the for the most part, it's higher than the ceiling on most other characters. And there's just no two ways about it. So even if the sales go down because it's three times a month, they're still going to do pretty well. So I get why they're doing it. You know, under Niccolo, who's the group editor for Spider Man, I believe. But um, I have concerns that this is going to be another age of x-men uh you know event or age of x-men debacle when they relaunch uncanny x-men unnecessarily with too many cooks in the kitchen and it just turned into an enormous pile of crap until all the other writers went away after issue 10 they all went and did that stupid event and uh who was it matthew rosenberg who you know i'm I'm not a fan of but the first seven issues of of his five issues five or six issues of his uh Uncanny X-Men, when it was just him, issues 11 through 15 or 16, it was, like, really good. Although they did throw in, a, you know, the first time we got Cyclops and, and Wolverine being in the in the same comic book together since he had been returned from the dead. So they charged us another $9 for that one or something crazy like that. They really, really stuck it to X-Men fans with that, knowing that they are rebooting it. That's definitely one of the reasons I'm apprehensive, but they're, they're, it feels like we're, we're cooking up another situation like that, and I find that unsatisfactory, especially when they really could have extended this Nick Lowe, or Nick Lowe, Nick Spencer run out to 2022 quite easily by not going to a monthly release schedule, by not doubling up and making these giant-sized comics. Those are essentially two issues anyway. That's a whole month's worth of, uh, of Spider-Man if they were just amazing Spider-Man. It really could have been done better, in my opinion. And that's just my opinion. And there's also the cynical nature in me. The reason that they are doing these monthly releases, and now we're going to this uh, three thrice monthly release schedule, it's because Marvel really likes to bend their customers over on these big milestone issues. I think they're really jealous that detective comics and in uh, action comics made it to issue 1000 before them huge buzz enormous sales obviously they try to recapture that with marvel uh marvel comics 1000 which did well but certainly doesn't have the um the legitimacy in some of the enthusiasm those dc comics did obviously those were started in the 40s spider-man was introduced in the 60s so they had a 20-year head start with those characters that they had continuously uh, been producing, and going to this you know monthly or four or weekly release schedule that they'd done earlier, not full time, but they did it a few times during this year, and then also going to this three times monthly allows them to catch up and get to those big milestones, you know, your nine hundred, your one thousands, where they can really cash in 
and uh, you know editor Nick Lowe and whoever's the writer at the time can really uh, say, look, I got a, I got this enormous seller. I sold four hundred and fifty thousand issues of a twelve dollar comic book with seventy five um, covers. So I do think that's an added benefit, obviously not to the reader, but to Marvel Comics themselves and uh, Spider Man Group editor Nick Lowe and, and the team there, and just Marvel Comics and their their bottom line and uh, what's his name? Is it David Gabriel? Is it Peter? It's got to be David Gabriel. I think he's the marketing guy at, at Marvel. So that's the cynical part that that says why they're kind of doing this, and it's going to kind of fall on its face. Obviously, we know in Spider-Man Beyond, we are getting Ben Riley taking back over the mantle of Spider-Man, the clone of Peter Parker, during the Clone Saga. Really interesting story when it started out. Kind of all falls apart in the end. They kept it going too long, and it turned out Peter was the clone, and Ben Riley was the original Spider-Man. They had to undo that. Uh, we certainly have seen Ben Riley as Spider-Man or Scarlet Spider in the past, they're certainly hinting at Peter Parker is going to die or going to be so incapacitated that he can no longer keep up the mantle under the, the stewardship of Kelly Thompson, Zeb Wells, Saladin Ahmed, Cody Ziegler, and Patrick Gleason. And then th that's kind of another thing that, that's being spoiled here. That's not going to last very long. They've already said that they're celebrating Spider-Man's 60th anniversary for the entire year of 2022. Are they going to do that without Peter Parker being Spider-Man? Here's what's going to happen. You, you can take it to the bank. Ben Riley is going to take over Spider-Man after he likely dies. Maybe he's just in the hospital and MJ dies. Whatever it is, once they un, once they get remarried and they break the, the one more day pack with, with Mephisto, there will be a repercussion. One of them is going to die. But Peter Parker will no longer be Spider-Man. And once they get to issue 100 and in Spider-Man Beyond, whatever, you know, that thing is, they're just going to relaunch Amazing Spider-Man number one with Peter Parker returning to the mantle so they can charge you 15 bucks. There, I've broken down your, your Amazing Spider-Man 60th uh, you know, anniversary celebration and what Marvel Comics has cooked up for you under Nick Lowe as the group editor and, and C.B. Cebulski as uh, the editor-in-chief. It's all meant to extract the most amount of money out of your pockets as possible. And you know, hey, I am not, I am not against comic book companies making some money. They certainly need need to at these these times. But I just think they could have done a better way. They probably could have planned this out better. Uh, you know, why even have um, Ben Riley took over the mantle when you already know that he's not going to be in there very long? As if you wouldn't have known already. But it's you know, signed, sealed, and delivered. In 2022, you're going to see a new launch of main Spider-Man with Peter Parker returning to the mantle after they do Spider-Man Beyond. And uh, we celebrate Spider-Man's 60th anniversary. Also, we, we've got, uh, you know, obviously the Spider-Man movie coming up from Mar Marvel Studios. And I believe the the sequel to Miles Morales, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is coming up actually next year. So there's going to be some stuff celebrating Spider-Man. This is the flagship character. There's going to be more than Spider-Man Beyond. There's going to be more than Into the Spider-Verse and, uh, you know, what is it, Far From Home? Whatever the third Spider-Man movie is that I'm not all that interested in. You know, they're going to be doing some stuff. There's probably going to be some cartoons, likely to be a mini series here or there. So get ready to be celebrating Spider-Man for an entire year. I happen to love Peter Parker Spider-Man. He's not my favorite character, but he's certainly one of my favorite characters. So I'll have fun with this, but I will be likely bitching and plating say god can can we, what is he batman everything is spider-man this year i imagine that's kind of what we're getting so get ready for spider-man beyond in 2022 the 60th anniversary celebration of the character peter parker's arrival in amazing fantasy 15 and uh well, that should all I'll do it uh thank you all for joining me i hope you're excited for this and i'll talk to you all later if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po.
and I'm out.